There you have it. Um, okay, just confirming I have my information correct. You're running for re-election in the third district Congress, right? That is correct. All right. Well, tell me why you're running for re-election. Well, there's a lot of work to do. I, I think we've gotten some things done, uh, but the fact of the matter is there's a lot of, of work to do. I know uh, we've been pushing back on the Biden agenda. You know, we, we got tax reform done. That's uh, one of my proudest uh, moments was when we were able to reform the tax code to grow our, grow our economy. Uh, we were seeing increased wages, uh, minimal inflation, and now that, that's changed. Inflation is out, uh, 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 overshadowing those higher wages, and we've got worker shortages. We've got some significant problems in the economy that need to be fixed. Yeah, absolutely. Now, talk to me a little bit about the experience and the leadership you'll continue to bring to the office if you're reelected. Well, as a member of the Ways and Means Committee, this is very important, uh, I think, for our, our nation's economy. Uh, more specifically uh, trade, international trade and exporting our agriculture products from Nebraska. Spend a lot of time on that, uh, engaging with my colleagues and, and uh, working in a way that ultimately uh, brings more prosperity to Nebraska. Sure, and you touched on a couple of topics, but what are some of the biggest issues that you're seeing facing the state and the nation? Well, inflation, uh, the inflation issue is, is huge. Like I said, it, it's overshadowing wages. Uh, we've got a supply chain uh, crisis that we are currently in. I, I wish the president would do more about that. Uh, quite honestly, I think he could find a lot of cooperation across uh, the political spectrum so that we can get our supply chains back in order so that consumers will have more choices, uh, uh, whether it's at the grocery store or the car dealership. Uh, the fact of the matter is we want consumers uh, to, to feel stronger, uh, feel like they are making some headway. Right now with inflation, they don't feel that way. And uh, this was avoidable, uh, un unfortunately. I think uh, uh, the president, he, his initial goal was to spend more money. In fact, I, I don't even think they, they cared as much uh, where it went, but they just wanted to push that money out there. And now we're seeing the consequences and everyone, literally everyone is feeling it. Yeah, absolutely. Now talk to you about some of these national issues. What are your thoughts on the situation in Russia and Ukraine? Well, it's unfortunate. I never thought I, I would see such an attack in my lifetime. I thought it would be more on the, you know, the cybersecurity end, uh, worse yet, the uh, chemical warfare. But this, uh, as it's called kinetic warfare, I, I didn't think I would see it, but here it is. And now I think it's important uh, that we are able to support our friends, uh, folks who have a similar appreciation uh, for democracy. And uh, I think that sending weapons to Ukraine should have happened before it actually did. Uh, we, we had the intelligence. We should have acted on that. Uh, I think we can pursue uh, various strategies without escalation. I, th I think that's important. But let's, let's keep all of our options on the table. I, I think it's unwise that, the, that uh, we would tell our enemies uh, what we won't do. Uh, let, let's focus on, on uh, keeping our options open and keeping our options, all options on the table uh, so that we can move forward and, and uh, help our friends. Yeah, absolutely right. There's definitely some, it's definitely an unfortunate, unfortunate situation over there. Um, now talk to me about your thoughts on abortion, specifically Roe versus Wade, which I know we had that leak this past week as well. Well, uh, the, the leak that took place uh, in the Supreme Court, uh, that was intended to undermine the process. That, that's very damaging to the entire process, so regardless where one might stand on a given issue, not just this one, but any any issue that the court would take up uh, to deliberately undermine uh, that process, I, I find very troubling. Now, I'm pro-life. Uh, I've always been pro-life. I think it's, it's uh, an important issue to all of our country. And, and folks are going to have debates on that regardless. Now, let's always remember what uh, Roe v. Wade is and what it is not, uh, or certainly what the court decides to do moving forward. We don't know for sure what that will be. Uh, but I think uh, handing the issue to the states is, is very reasonable. Uh, I, I think that's what our, our founders intended in, in terms of um, the issues and, and, and the way the Constitution is, is formulated and structured. Uh, so I, I think it's important, though, uh, that we let the Supreme Court uh, work its process and ultimately uh, come up with a decision that, you know, the Supreme, Supreme Court has made decisions in the past that I that I didn't really like, uh, but yet they made the decision and we have to move forward on that basis. Sure. And 
And um, one other final national question for you. What are your thoughts on that year-round sale of E15 ethanol fuel? Yeah, I've been working on the E15 issue for several years, long before the pandemic, and uh, really found uh, some great supporters in the retail fuel community who wanted to, who they want to offer their customers more choices. And so the opportunity for E15 on, on a year round basis, I think is very reasonable. It's well within what technology can deliver and protecting our environment. Uh, you know, the president decided to work on this as an emergency measure because of the price of, of gasoline right now. But this issue is, is, is about more than just the price of gasoline. Uh, it's about energy security in general. It's about consumer choice. Uh, it, it's about a lot of different things. So um, I'm glad to uh, continue to work on this issue. Uh, we know that liquid fuels, biofuels more specifically, are um, a major part of our economy, a major part of transportation in our every, everyday life. And, and so I hope that we can uh, formulate federal policy to be more accommodating of what consumers want and certainly what consumers need. Sure. And just to clarify um, what I'm understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you are in favor of that year-round sale. I am in favor of the year-round sale of E15, uh, definitely. Uh, this is something that, quite honestly, should have been done a long time ago. We were headed in that direction uh, under the Trump administration, uh, and uh, things have changed with the EPA uh, under the Biden administration, unfortunately. Uh, but I'm glad at least the, the president wants to act on a, an emergency basis. Uh, with E15, I, I think it needs to go beyond what this uh, emergency measure is so that long term uh, we have consumers with the options at the pump. Sure. Okay. Um, and now, if you're reelected, how do you plan to solve some of these issues that we've just discussed? Well, you know, uh, America was founded on uh, as a result of a, a very vigorous debate. You know, there was disagreement. Some of our founders didn't like each other. And yet they still came together to deliver us the Constitution, uh, among other foundations uh, of our democracy and, and our republic. And the fact is, uh, we need to have these conversations, whether it's energy, uh, whether it's trade policy, uh, you know, uh, it's the social issues that uh, are, are likely to come up as well. Uh, let's have respectful conversations, respectful debate, uh, and, and head toward uh, bringing our economy to a stronger point than it is right now, for example. Uh, I, I think there are things we can pursue that can bring us together uh, rather than, you know, these measures, for example, undermining the Supreme Court. I don't think we've ever seen something like this happen before at the Supreme Court. And, and I think it, it's probably because some folks want to change the topic of conversation away from inflation. But when you, when you really consider the issue such as inflation and how it impacts everyone, uh, I think that it's hard to turn our back on, on that issue uh, because it is so important. Sure. And you know, one final question for you, that May 10th primary election day is so soon, just around the corner, I can't believe it myself. Um, what message do you have for those voters as they head out on Tuesday? Well, certainly get out and vote. I, I would appreciate everyone's votes in Nebraska's third district. I, I hope we never take for granted the fact that we have the opportunity to show up and help chart the course of our nation and moving forward. You know, the, the House, we have two-year terms. So that, that's by design, uh, our founders. You know, we don't have a Senate seat open this, this year, but we do the, the governor's seat and other constitutional offices. But let's not forget that even down to the local level, uh, we have candidates running. I, I hope uh, as well, we never take for granted that our local government that does deliver so much of, of what we ought not take for granted every day. I'm glad that folks across Nebraska are willing to step up, whether it's the sheriff's office, county treasurer, county commissioner, whatever the case might be. I hope we never take for granted the opportunity uh, to that we have as voters to select these folks uh, who, who offer themselves up and ultimately uh, want to serve our communities. Sure. Um, well, those are all the questions that I have for you. Is there anything else you would like to add today? I think that's good. Okay, let me go ahead and stop this recording and then